Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show. Got a quick thought for you all this week. So you might have caught the news that Steam announced that it's going to be offering refunds. Steam is one of the largest digital distributors of pretty much anything in the world. It's the largest one for games. And so now if you buy a game for any reason, you can if you want to return a game for any reason, you can totally do so. Um, this applies to full games, bundles, DLC, and according to the policy page, which I'll link to in the description, it's unconditional for any game that you've played for less than two hours. So it might not run well your machine or maybe you just don't really like it very much. There is a stipulation that makes it clear to Valve if you're abusing the policy um, that they'll, uh, they can stop you from doing so. You'll be flagged and cut off, but presumably this won't happen unless you're returning a lot of different games. There isn't a lot of visibility about what you need to do in order for Steam to revoke this particular privilege. I am very much for the idea of refunds and the idea that you should be able to return digital products, but in this particular instance, I am not a big fan and let me explain to you why. So I think the big issue here is that this policy actually disincentivizes smaller game designers from making short games. And by short, I mean under two hours. Um, so lately there's been a surge of critically acclaimed hits that would have been affected by this. Gone Home, for example, takes about two hours to play. I think my time cl clocked in at like one hour and 45 minutes. Um, and if you can, you can look at how long to beat.com, most people finish it around two hours. A single episode of Kentucky Route Zero is one to two hours, or a game like Proteus, which is also so on Steam can be quote unquote beaten in about an hour or PT, which is not on Steam or really anywhere for that matter. That's about an hour and a half. And these are all games that are really highly ranked. They rank very highly on Kill Screen's uh, year end list. But with this policy, you could see that um, you could see that you know all the content. You could see everything that is in this particular game and then return it within the time limit. Now, ostensibly, you could um, you know Steam could allow for designers to basically decide how far you need to progress in a game. So if it's a short shorter game, for example, um, you could decide that you have a certain number of achievements so to sort of avoid people from sort of like eating every single uh, every single bit of a meal and then trying to return it to the kitchen. Um, or perhaps they'll change it to some kind of percentage. Um, but if you look at a designer like Nina Freeman, for example, a designer of uh, um, how, how do they do it? And another great game called uh, Sibel that's upcoming. She was really disheartened by this idea that like smaller smaller projects would really be short uh, would really be affected by this refund policy. Ostensibly, people aren't just going to abuse it willy nilly, but it's hard not to argue that if you know ostensibly something that you could put up that someone experiences, let's say, the vast majority of, and then it has the ability to return it, that that wouldn't have some kind of negative effect on game designers. So I think the big question at heart and the interesting issue here is what constitutes quote unquote quote, significant play. So we're not going to go see Mad Max and complain it wasn't quote unquote long enough, but in games, people tend to calculate a game's worth, not by whether or not they were affected by it, whether it speaks to them in a meaningful way, but by how long it is. This is something that I brought up in my episode on game length, or they evaluate by how much quote unquote replay value it has, like, um, you know, how many miles you're going to get out of a used car or something like that. And I, again, I've talked about this before. I mean, I think the big issue is that we tend to think of games as, uh, as content. So by Viewing games as content, it's problematic because we don't necessarily think of them as being culturally significant. So as the writer and art critic um, Susan Sontag wrote in her famous essay collection, Against Interpretation, she wrote that our task is not to find the maximum amount of content in a work of art, or our task is to cut back content so that we can see the thing at all. And she goes on to say that content or this idea, content violates art. It makes art into an article for use, for arrangement, into a mental scheme um, of categories. I think this is really emblematic of the way that we often think about games. Um, and that's where I can definitely see the two hour mark sort of making a lot of sense if you're looking at games core value proposition in, is how much time you spend with them. So for something that's 40 hours long, then yeah, two hours seems like an appropriate amount of time to, to evaluate something and then the potentially return it. But if it's a lot shorter, then you can understand that uh, you can understand where the problem lies. So anyway, obviously Steam has a, you know, Valve has a history of listening to consumers. And if they feel like um, people aren't necessarily heartened by this development, they'll make some changes. They've done so in the past. Uh, it's just in this initial foray, I was uh, a little bit disappointed. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think. Hash it out in the comments and I'll see you all next week.